Over the last two episodes, we talked through the nuts and bolts of creating a podcast. We wanted to wrap up this mini-series by recommending a few podcasts to check out in 2022. Some are church-related and some aren't, but we hope each might offer some inspiration or an example of what's possible through this incredible medium. And who knows, you might find a podcast or two to add to your rotation. Thank you to everybody for listening. My name is Dan Wunderlich. I'm a United Methodist pastor, and Happy New Year to you. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and a chance to get some rest. This last year was a challenge, to say the least. And as we transition from 2021 into 2022, there's a new variant sweeping across my country and much of the world. And after a relatively relatively safer and more normal fall, this has served as a reminder that the pandemic is definitely not over, especially around the world, but even in places with high vaccination rates. What this means on a practical level for us in the church is as much as many of us are doing everything we can to find ways to build and rebuild community through in-person engagement, digital ministry is still vital and needed. For many, it's still the primary, if not the only link they have to the church. And so, as we talked about back in November and December of 2021, podcasting might just be a way for you to make connections, share the good news, make disciples, and yes, even market your church. So what we have for you today are some podcast recommendations. Now, this is not a top five list. There are so many podcasts and everyone's tastes are different, but rather we wanted to give you some examples of shows that we think are well done and might offer some inspiration for you as you explore starting or continuing to podcast in 2022 and beyond. But before we jump into the main list, let's shout out five quick recommendations that are directly connected to our show. First is the Louisiana Now podcast hosted by our November 2021 guest, Todd Rossnagel. You'll remember that Todd has a background in traditional broadcast journalism, and he brings this experience and expertise to the storytelling and interviews on this show. Numbers two and three are Pastoring in the Digital Parish and the Compass Podcast, both hosted by our December 2021 guest, Ryan Dunn. Ryan is an excellent interviewer, and he's also experimenting with video components to his podcast. So if that's something you're thinking about, his shows are great examples to check out. And of course, since for most, if not all of us, our church marketing work crosses over with digital ministry in general, that Pastoring in the Digital Parish podcast is one you should be listening to. Number four is the Get Your Spirit in Shape podcast, a sister podcast of ours from UM Communications, featuring conversations with leaders, authors, and others who offer spiritual nutrition and exercises for our everyday lives. And number five, I will admit, is a bit of a shameless plug, but I host my own podcast called Art of the Sermon. Like this show, it's a mix of interviews and monologues, and it's all about the beauty and challenge of communicating in today's world. The show has been on a bit of a hiatus for the last couple of years, but there are 71 episodes in the archive, and I hope to bring it back someday. Okay, on to the main list. And now, look, let's be honest. When you ask anyone who loves podcasts to start recommending podcasts, they are never going to stop. This episode is called Five Podcasts to Check Out in 2022, but I've already named five. So did you really think there would only be five more The way this is really going to work is I'm going to cover five categories of podcasts that I think have great potential for churches and digital ministry. Now, there are many more genres and categories of podcasts that we won't cover here, like fiction or improv comedy or two celebrities chatting and TV recaps and rewatches. Also, many of the podcasts recommended below are made by professional podcasters or media companies, although not all of them. You may not have the resources like equipment or a music budget or, frankly, the time to match exactly what you hear, but these are meant to be examples for inspiration. And if you hear something you love, focus more on what you can do rather than what you can't. Lastly, about half the list below are religious and church-related shows and half aren't. Just a heads up, none are vulgar or anything, but just wanted you to know in case you start exploring some of these podcasts. The first category of podcast that I think has great potential for church ministry is storytelling. Is your pastor excellent at telling stories in their sermons? Do they find and use great sermon illustrations that draw you in, make you laugh, make you think, and ultimately deliver a message? Or maybe there's someone on your team or in your congregation who loves history or trivia and is always sharing something interesting. The storytelling format may be one to explore, 
You see, our human brains are wired for stories, and it's a natural way to lower people's defenses and invite them to think about a topic or a question, which makes it ripe for ministry. The first podcast I'd recommend is called 99% Invisible. Host Roman Mars and his team of reporter storytellers tackle the little details of the world around us that often get overlooked but are incredibly interesting. One of my favorite episodes is actually from way back in 2014, episode 129 called Thomasons, about things people pay to maintain but no longer serve their purpose. Like when you see painted fire escapes on the side of a building where the windows that access those stairs have been long bricked over. The second podcast I'd recommend in the storytelling genre is a short-run podcast called The Anthropocene Reviewed. In each episode, author John Green reviews a small handful of things from the human experience, from seemingly trivial things like Diet Dr. Pepper and Scratch and Sniff stickers to deeper topics like our capacity for wonder and sunsets. But of course, these aren't simply reviews. There are many history lessons, social commentary, and often deep reflection on what it means to be a human. A particularly poignant episode is from December 26th of 2019, in which John reviews the song Auld Lang Syne. He's since turned the episodes of this podcast into a book of essays by the same title. The second category you might consider exploring is the trusted resource. Now, this is a style of content creation in general that I think has great potential as church marketing. And in fact, I've mentioned it on this show a couple times before. The idea is to regularly share engaging and helpful content within a specific subject area. And over time, if what you share really does make an impact, you become a trusted resource in that subject area, a place people turn to when they have questions or need help. The first example is Akimbo, a podcast from Seth Godin. Seth Godin is a name you hear on this podcast quite frequently because he's one of the true marketing gurus out there. And what's also great about Seth is his approach to marketing is not one that leaves you feeling icky like some can. His show isn't specifically about marketing, but it is about how human minds, behavior, and culture work, much like his daily blog. And I have to say, thanks to his blog and his podcast, I've purchased multiple books written by Seth because he proved himself to be a trusted resource. The second example is Travel with Rick Steves. And Rick Steves is the example I gave on a previous podcast about using this trusted resource approach in church marketing. He's become the go-to guy for information about traveling in Europe. His weekly podcast features interviews with tour guides and authors who plant dreams about where to travel, and then he offers practical tips for getting the most out of your visit. And when it's time for you to plan your vacation, one of the first places you'll turn, and maybe even spend your money, is with Rick because he's earned your trust. Now, another great reason for highlighting these two specific podcasts is that they employ different formats. Seth Godin's show is a monologue, and Rick Steve's show is mostly interviews. For the purpose of today's show, monologue and interview are techniques rather than categories. How you use them and why is what matters. In one, you are the expert voice. In the other, you're a curator of voices creating a community around a set of perspectives. A variation on the trusted resource genre is the Q&A show. Rather than the host planning the material, you answer questions submitted by the listeners. Of course, this can be a difficult one to start from scratch because you'll need some questions, although maybe you could use your congregation to provide some. But if you can get it going, answering the real questions from your community is a great way to show you care. The first show I'd recommend is the Ask N.T. Wright Anything show. This podcast features Anglican bishop, theologian, and prolific author Tom Wright answering questions both theological and pastoral. Secondly, I'd recommend the Pro Church Tools show with Brady Shearer. He answers church communications questions submitted by people just like you and me who are doing the day-in, day-out work of church marketing and digital ministry. And just like with Seth and Rick in the first category, both N.T. Wright and Brady Shearer have products and services that their listeners can purchase, but they build the trust within the audience by serving them for free first through their podcast. And now likely we don't have products to sell, but connecting with a church is an investment and that also requires trust.
The third category, I'm just going to call teaching the Bible. As we noted in both of the last two episodes on podcasting, creating a show out of your sermon audio is one of the easiest and most popular ways churches get into podcasting. But it's not the only format for teaching the Bible, and maybe not even the best format for teaching the Bible via podcast. Now, this first one, you're likely familiar with the Bible Project's YouTube videos, but did you know they also have a podcast, the Bible Project podcast? In preparation for each of their videos, they have hours of conversation between the people in charge of the theology and the person in charge of making sure the videos make sense to regular people. And what's awesome is that they record these essentially one-on-one Bible study sessions and release them as podcasts. They're so great because it pairs a quote-unquote regular person with world-class Bible scholars, and they work to come to a place where the deep and complex truth of the Bible is something that most people can grasp. I love this podcast and cannot recommend it highly enough. Secondly, I would offer the Pulpit Fiction Podcast. It's a weekly lectionary podcast hosted by two clergy, one of whom is United Methodist Pastor Rob McCoy. They break down the coming week's scriptures and talk through what a preacher could do with their sermon, doing both exegesis as well as talking through illustrations, current events, and areas of pop culture that might resonate. And while this show is specifically aimed at preachers, the idea can be tweaked to reach a general audience. What's great is both of these formats offer the potential to do something we talked about with Todd Rosnagel in November, and that is make the sermon shorter. More focused sermons are almost always more memorable and effective. But speaking as a preacher myself, I know that we like to put everything we read or thought about that week into the sermon, or it feels like a waste. Having an outlet like a weekly podcast where you can dig deeper into areas of the sermon that didn't make the final cut or answer the questions of someone in your church about what you said on Sunday, those are great ways to use all that extra prep and serve those in your congregation who want more. Podcasts are the perfect format for guiding people through spiritual disciplines like prayer and contemplation, and that is our fourth category. For me, the gold standard for a spiritual discipline type podcast is the Pray As You Go podcast. These are short daily episodes featuring music, a scripture reading, a devotion, and questions for reflection. It also doesn't hurt that virtually every voice on the show has a British accent. And though this format is not hard to replicate, I would note, and this is really the case for every podcast you might make, but if you listen to this one and immediately run a run out and make your own version, you need to make sure that if you're using any music, any readings, including scripture or any other media, make sure you're using it legally. Check on copyright and licensing before you use anything that was created by someone else in your podcast. The final category for today is one that I have come to appreciate as a parent, and that is shows for kids and families. You know, I spend quite a bit of time in the car with my three-year-old, and on our daily drives to and from school, we cycle through episodes of our favorite kid-friendly podcasts. Her absolute favorite is called Classical Kids Storytime. It features short stories read or performed with classical music as the soundtrack. Some other examples are Highlights Hangout and Wow in the World. That Highlights podcast is just a podcast version of my daughter's favorite magazine, Highlights High Five. And Wow in the World is similar. It's a magazine-style podcast, and it focuses in on science and technology. They both string together short segments that teach and entertain at the same time. You know, the time that families spend in the car is so valuable. This is essentially captive time for parents and children or grandparents and children where they are stuck together, essentially. And it's where so many impactful conversations can happen. So if you can create something that is engaging and also helps teach the stories and values of our faith, you will definitely make an impact. But remember, the key to any kids podcast or programming in general is that it has to be fun. And now listeners, we want to hear from you. What podcasts would you recommend? Are there any styles or genres of podcasts that you enjoy and want to see the church get into more? Email us at podcast at umcom.org and we just might share your thoughts or recommendations on a future episode. And you can, of course, use that email podcast at umcom.org to send us any feedback or topic suggestions you have for the show. We always love hearing from you.
As always, the easiest way to support the show and help other church communicators like yourself find it is by sharing this episode with your friends and colleagues and by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever service you're listening to right now. And did you know that United Methodist Communications is celebrating 80 years of ministry? Your support ensures that the latest denominational news, dynamic stories, and informative articles will continue to connect our global community. Make a tax-deductible donation today at resourceumc.org slash giveumcom. Thanks again for listening to the MyCom Church Marketing Podcast.